Hey guys, it's me, Jessica Henry. Um, I'm here today and I'm gonna paint this little uh, abandoned boat. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me. I have um, some really fun things I wanted to, well actually I found this really cool old wooden boat that I thought would make a really interesting little um, demo today. Hey guys, good to see you. I, I, I was gonna paint one of the regular normal fishing boats that we see all the time, but as I was walking around, I got here a little bit early and I saw this wooden boat all washed up on the beach. And I thought, you know, I know my friends and I think that we all would agree that this is much more interesting because we don't see this very often. And um, another challenge that I wanted to talk about was when I was thinking about painting those other boats was these fishermen, they come and they take the boats and it's been quite a few times when I've looked up and the boat's gone. So I wanted to talk today about um, working on kind of the center of interest first. Normally we start from the background and work our way to the foreground, but in this case, since sometimes you have elements in your planner scene that um, disappear on you or the light changes or whatever, I thought it might be interesting to show you today how I'm going to lay down just quickly the composition and then I'm going to start on the boat because I'm going to pretend like some, somebody's going to come and take this. Even <laughs> Oh, I guess we're back on. Looks like I might have some kind of iffy um, cell reception, but I don't know. It, we came back on, so I'm hoping for the best. So glad to see you guys. Um, I am feeling great. Thank you so much for your, your prayers and your um, best wishes. I feel 100% today, which is really unusual, and I thank you so much for all of your encouragement yesterday. It means a lot. Um, so anyway, I am going to jump in since maybe my cell reception is a little iffy. And um, what I have here going on is I just have my basic setup. I have my um, plein air. Uh, easel and this is a canvas. Today I'm doing an 8x10. That's why we're a little bit closer today. Normally um, I do an 11 by 14 for these demos but since it's really hard to get a lot of paint on a canvas and in one of these short videos so I went with an uh, 8x10 so we're a little bit closer. And this is just gessoed but I did tone it so I have a little bit of color on it. Um, just some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and a little yellow ochre and I rubbed it on and kind of wiped it off. I cannot see your guys' comments because there's a glare but I will definitely get back to them uh, when this is over. Uh, and then for my colors I have out my standard. I have titanium white, cad yellow pale, um, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. I do have a little alizarin crimson and phthalo green out just because I kind of always have them out. and. Um, that's it. I have my Gamsol and my linseed oil. Hi guys, <laughs> good to see you. Uh, and then I just have my regular brushes. I'm going to start out today with just a small, um, this is just a two, just little guy, just to draw on where I want this composition to go. I would have done a little thumbnail sketch, but I actually forgot a pencil today, so whatever. <laughs> so anyway, I am, again, I'm here in, um, this is a Long Island Sound, and um, it's this is called Eaton's Neck, where I am, my little corner of the world, and it is gorgeous today. I'm so happy to be out. All right, I'm gonna jump in, and I hope that you can see everything all right. We'll see you guys. <laughs> Good to see you out there. All right, so what I'm thinking about here as I'm gonna lay down my composition is where I want this boat to go. Obviously, the painting's gonna be about the boat, so, um, I don't want it to be huge, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make it too small that we have to wonder what the painting's about. So I'm looking at the front of the boat here, and well, maybe yeah, about there, and then the back of the boat. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm holding my brush. This, to, um, this is the point of the boat, and then I'm looking to where if I hold my brush straight across where the back of the boat might come above the brush, so that when I lay it here, if this is the point of the boat, the top of the boat comes about there. You're, you're guessing as much as you can, but you're dealing with sort of a, a, point, a perspective issue on this. So it's a little bit, of, it's kind of like painting a building or anything else architectural in your landscape. So I'm just making marks where I want that to go. And I'm squinting down at it too. Um, just so that I can see it flatter, I close my recessive eye and kind of squint down with my dominant eye and it sort of flattens it out so instead of worrying so much about all those angles, I'm just seeing them as flat basic shapes, which kind of makes it easier to do architectural things in, in a painting. So the 
bottom of the boat, coming like this. Like that. And then it kind of opens. Oh, I guess we're back on. If we lose cell reception, I'm just going to keep going because it seems like it'll um, it'll reconnect. But if you if it gets annoying to watch, what you can do is after the video, you can watch it, and those little spots um, are just kind of like little jumps in the in the video. So there's always that. <laughs> I'll try to keep watching in case I miss you, <laughs> and I'm just chatting and nobody's there. All right, so I'm just continuing on with the drawing of this boat. Just drawing it with my brush, thinking about that. And then I've got uh, the shadow under here, giving it anchor to the beach. I'm also gonna try to get in these um, really cool, the, the seats in here, they go across like this, like that, and I really do want to get that that old broken down look to this, so that's going to be kind of fun to play with. Short of the um, cell reception here, <laughs> uh, I have great batteries, so I'm I'm actually going to kind of just take my time on this, even though I am going to uh, try to get it done within an hour. I want this one to be really cool because I love this boat when I saw it. All right, so that's kind of good for now. I'm going to go through and start laying in the rest of my composition. I love how the water has this beautiful transparency right here. So I'm going to kind of play with some of that. And what you can't see is that it kind of wraps around and there's a little bit of uh, the land coming down like this back in here. But I'm not going to play this up really, uh, there's a lot of houses and detail back in there. I'm not going to make that really attention grabbing because I want the focus to stay here. All right, and then the land goes back that way. And the water, this is all, the water is so blue today. All right, so I think that that's kind of feeling about right. The land comes out a little bit like this. Checking to see if you're still there. <laughs> Sorry if I missed you guys' comments, but I will get them later. Um, so that comes like that. Maybe I will have this cut behind the boat a little bit, just for interest, like the boat's still a little bit connected to the water. I think that sounds more interesting. All right. So that's coming around like that. And... Uh, <laughs> making this happen. Okay, now I'm um, laying down the little brush because I don't really need it anymore. I'm gonna pick up, um, this is a size six, just a, a hog's hair. Um, <laughs> thanks guys. Uh, the lighting is gorgeous. It's a beautiful day today. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna do the sky because I pretty much have the boat design layout where I want it. So just taking a great big scoop of white and some ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna use a little bit of oil because those two colors, when I, I need a whole bunch of it, so I'm gonna kind of make it a little bit thicker here. Starting at the top. I don't have very much of the sky here to get that really cool dome-like effect, but um, just gonna try to fabricate a little bit of it so that it has that feeling of sky. As I move down towards the horizon, I'm going to add just a teeny bit of phthalo green. Just a little, little tiny bit, the smallest amount. That warms up that mixture of the blue and, oh, excuse me, it cool, yeah, warms it up. The blue and white. If you try adding yellow to it, it makes it greenish and um, like kind of dingy. I've, I've done that before too and I just don't, it doesn't get the right effect. So surprisingly, a little bit of phthalo green warms it up enough. Um, all right, so that's looking where I want it to go. And I saw this boat here, I thought it was so cool, all beat up in wooden. 
and there's water in the bottom of it. I know you probably can't see that, but um, it just kind of made me wonder what its story is, you know, where did it come from and why did they just leave it here? What happened? <laughs> Um, so I'm laying this down fairly thick, uh, just in pieces, and if you see me, I'm going up and down and up and down, uh, just because it kind of breaks up the, the stagnant passage there, and I think it makes the brushwork look more interesting. As I move up again to this, just to kind of blend it a little bit. Um, I never want to do this sort of cross-hatching blending, so I just use smaller brush strokes. That's one of the ways that I, I prefer to blend colors, just smaller brush strokes. I hope that the, that looks all okay. All right. Good enough <laughs> for this guy. There's some teeny little clouds. I'm not going to worry about those. All right, so that, that back piece of land way over there is um, a really soft, light purple. And I, do, I will take a little bit of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue, but I'll also add a little bit of yellow ochre into that just to kind of um, make it feel a little bit more earthy and warm it up a little. Because if I, I've done uh, just like a violety purple and it just kind of is, it doesn't feel earthy enough, but by adding that little bit of warmth to it, it seems to have that effect. I think that value I just laid down is too dark, so I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. Oh, it's so nice to feel the sun is hot. I love that. Feels really good. As, it, as I move this land off of my um, painting, I'm going to kind of make the value a little bit lighter so that it kind of that it just recedes into nothingness over here. So as I go, I just pick up more paint and I will add a little bit more of white to that mixture. As it goes, just letting it go off. Because I don't want to have a strong line going whoop. Um, it just, it, it, it bothers me. <laughs> Bad composition. <laughs> you can kind of alter things like that if you want. All right, getting some of that water in now. Um, just taking ultramarine blue, a um, little bit of yellow ochre, and some white because, well, by adding yellow ochre, it, it's because it's semi-opaque, and the ultramarine blue is a little bit, a um, little bit transparent. The two mixed together, kind of the yellow ochre works to make the um, ultramarine blue a little bit more opaque and lighter in tone. So I really didn't need to add very much white, although I am getting some white that was on my palette here. I think that that's still a little bit too dark, adding a little bit of white to that mixture. Drawing a line straight. color for water. And again, as I'm thinking about going off the edge, I'm just going to subtly adjust the value change from here to here so that this isn't as stark of a contrast. Because anything that draws the eye off the canvas, you want to uh, avoid that. Okay, so I have some the darker passages in the water and lighter. Okay, I'm lazy. I'll get some more paint mixed. <laughs> if, you, if you don't mix a big enough puddle of color, then um, you have to keep mixing. It's a little frustrating, especially when I had like the perfect color and then it's gone. So, oh well. That's one of the reasons I love working on a limited palette is that um, it's really easy to try to remember the colors that you had. You only have so many choices. So in this batch that I just made, I, I know you probably can't see it that well, I added more yellow ochre because as I get closer in the water, I'm seeing a lot more yellow down this way. And um, it's lighter in value too, so 
In this case, I'm going to add some more white oops, and, and some oil just to thin it down a little bit. so relaxing. Everybody's probably falling asleep. <laughs> Sorry I'm missing your comments. But I, there's such a strong glare on the phone, but um, I'll, I'll have to get them later. Water, hopefully, as it comes towards us here. It's thicker. And again, making it lighter in value. Um, another thing that I'm noticing too here as the water comes closer is I see more of the dirt and sand underneath it. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that action going on in here. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre and some burnt sienna. Just mix it up off to the side. Maybe a little more yellow ochre. I didn't have very much in there. I have some blue already on my brush, so it's kind of making a nice um, mixture combination of that, what color the sand is under the water. That, you know, I have that water going too far out. I'm going to make it closer. Like that. That's pretty. This water is so pretty. I could never get tired of painting it. There's so many challenges to it. You know, it never holds still. I have my paper towels under here. Um, they're held on by a bungee cord that I have wrapped around my tripod. Okay. As soon as this kind of comes out, I see a little bit of glue in here. I'm going to take a little bit of that phthalo green and mix it in with my um, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. It just, together with those color combinations, it makes a really beautiful ocean color right in there. Just to add some variation to that. And then, of course, as you're painting water, you want to use uh, horizontal brush strokes just to keep it feeling like water. Okay. And this comes over, there's um, a little piece of land that juts out into the water that I think makes an interesting composition. So I'm going to add that in here. But I see underneath this thing has like a, a dark value. Put that in like that. Looks interesting. While I have this brown on my brush, I'm adding a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of white into that because the trees over there are still kind of, you know, they're without their leaves and stuff. So I have this, this nice taupe color. Just going to kind of mass out some of this value for the land. Squinting way down at it because, I, like I said before, I don't want to add a lot of the details of the houses and stuff. Not very much. I'll just add a little bit, just so that there's some visual interest back there. Okay, and then um, some of that sand as it comes down. I'm seeing that way over there. Oops, I got too much yellow. It's really pretty. sand kind of comes up the hill. I have way too much yellow, cad yellow in there. It's messing up my world. There, that's better. My brush is a little too heavily loaded. All right, so that comes around. I'll pick up some more of that. Pop in some nice sunlit sand over there and over here while I have it. On these days that are slightly breezy, I do not hang my um, plastic bags out because they just rattle and, and this is the camera angle has... Oh! Oh good! <laughs> Great. Thank you guys.
All right, so I'm gonna quick pop in just a few little, just suggest the houses. I don't wanna, like I said, I don't wanna call attention to them. So I have, um, I'm gonna get sort of an off-white with some blue in there just to go. bunch of them back there but I'm not going to add that many. For quick little studies it's not necessary to go nuts on uh, architecture and stuff. All right. Let's color back in here. Show the trees kind of hiding those houses. good enough. I'm not really too preoccupied with that. I think I will just make it a little bit more visually interesting. Pop in a little color there. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever. If I had more time, I might go through and, and add a little more detail. But again, like I said, I don't want to do too much back there. Just suggest Mostly for this painting, uh, I'm really just using the ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre. You can do so much with, with just those colors and, and white. Just kind of making it look like some of the land is going down to the water. Okay, so that, that effect is there. I'm satisfied with that. And then this thing kind of juts out into the water. Like that. I don't want, it, it really does jut off the canvas that way, but I'm not gonna have it do that because again, it would be a compositional like that. I don't wanna do that. There's some green on the top of that that is always nice, especially this time of year to add a little green to something. I don't have very much of it. I'm going to get some of that sand as it comes around the boat. I am anxious to get going on the boat because it's so cool looking. But I laid it out and um, I don't know, it's coming along. Hope you can see it all and are enjoying it. Oh, thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> all right. I hope, I hope I'm answering your questions. I, I do apologize again that I can't see them, but I will do what I can afterwards to get them. So this color that I have here, there's some actual, there's some color swirling in it, but it is um, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and white with a little bit of blue in it. This will really pop too when I get that shadow really strong, but for that shadow to appear strong, I need to have the sand even more sunlit than what I have it here. So I'm gonna take a big scoop of yellow ochre and white, probably some oil just to thin that down a little bit because I need a lot of it right in here. It's almost the color that I already have toned on the canvas. like where that's going. Yeah, it feels fine. I'm probably going to leave a lot of this canvas just blank down here because it's it's pretty much sand color. I think it looks interesting to not have it solid. All right. So I have a little bit of a darker line here where the beach, the water has washed, washed up some little beachy stuff. So I'm just going to suggest that. Let's just Oh, something just fell. <laughs> like that. Like that. Get some of this water in here closer. Make that a little bit wider. I love that effect where the colors are allowed to swirl on the canvas. Um, I've mentioned before a little bit about brushwork. Brushwork really is the heart and soul of a painting. Um, how you lay down the paint, the application, aggressive or gentle or soft or a light touch. It's like the notes on a piano. Um, as a person plays, uh, 
how they press the keys is, is um, a good way to describe how the paint comes off the brush. So much of that, is so much feeling in the end is where you, you really pick it up in there. Let's find a move for me. All right. Um, some of this. Oh, this is so peaceful. <laughs> I'm surprised I still have cell reception. I'm really happy about that. I hope though that, I mean, you can see when you make a mistake, like I, that color was not right, I'm just gonna go right over the top of that or use it and I'll blend it in. Um, but you can use those mistakes to your advantage. There's really, I mean, there's nothing about this that uh, you can't explain. It's just, I'm trying to take away some of that um, intimidation of getting out into the wilderness and, you know, um, just getting the paint down. You learn as you go. And um, you learn what works for you and what isn't going to work. And you just make adjustments. Like that color wasn't right, so you can just scrape it off and fix it. All right, so that's all right. I, I'll probably go back and tweak it a little bit. <laughs> oh, thanks for sharing the video, guys. I appreciate that. Okay, I'm gonna jump into that boat now. I mean, not literally. <laughs> I wish I could, but I'd probably get wet. Okay, so looking at it, um, I'm gonna do this in three values, the light, medium, and dark. Right now, I'm gonna start with the darks. And I'm gonna just, just take uh, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna. Those are my standards. But you just take them in different proportions. And I take three of those colors, and I just paint a little bit of each one into each other. But since it's a wooden boat, I'll use a little bit more of the burnt sienna and yellow ochre in my shadows. I have a really warm sunlight, so my shadows are going to be cooler, so I'll add a little bit more of the blue. Um, looking at that. Okay. Looking at the shape. Just kind of squinting down at that, trying to figure out where the darkest darks are. And keep it still fairly cool. into this value I can always scumble a little bit um, more interesting color. So for example, I just have kind of a blue tone here, blue with some streaks, and I'll paint other color into that. I like the strong sharp edge of, I guess that's the bow. And it comes this way. There's that broken, jagged edge here. And then it comes around. And then it just sort of breaks off over here. It looks so cool. It just kind of, it's just down, sad. And then um, I have the shadows under the seats. Got a little one back there, there. And then um, under this seat, you know what, there's more yellow ochre in that. Like that. And then this one, in the shape of that. Okay. I'm also going to get that shadow underneath the boat too, because that is going to help anchor it right onto the sand. And that's pretty, pretty strong blues. This. And I see it as fairly uniform from the front to the back. Love that water. <laughs> I don't know, I suppose this was some sort of a canoe or kayak or something. I don't know. 
Are kayaks wooden? I <laughs> I've been checking out kayaking lately, so it's been an interest of mine for about a couple weeks now. I want to try it. So there's that. And I'm feeling good about that coming up like that. All right, now I'm going to do the middle tone of this boat. Inside the boat, mostly, is this area where um, for example, the lightest lights are the, the seats as they get hit directly from the sun. So everything else is kind of an indirect light. So those are what I'm going to hit up next. So this comes... seeing a little bit of violet in there. So I'll add some of that. It's probably too dark. Like that. And I can also kind of reshape things that got a little wonky on me. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> oh, there's a big boat coming in, I think. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's a better color. And then it comes like this. This piece over here is really broken. I can go back through and add more water and, and fix the sand around here to kind of adjust that. Oh, like this. There's more yellow ochre in the bottom of the boat because of the, um, the water. There's water in there, so it kind of creates a different effect. I think I'll play with some of that and add some sparkles so you can see there's like a puddle in there. I hope that you can see that because I, I don't really know, but um, I hope it works <laughs> uh, enough like that. I think as I start to get the third value of the lightest light from here, it should show a little bit more um, of the anatomy of this boat. But again, I, I, like I said before, I'm just squinting down at it to try to get some of these shapes in here as accurate as I can. I'm going to get those lighter tones in right now, even though I'm not really ready to because I don't have all the middle tone done, but it needs to have some structure. So I am going to get some yellow ochre and white. And I'm laying these down, this color down for the seats and right up here on this thing. So this value is right. And then I have it going back this way. There's another one right here. And back here. And then the last little thing back there. But I like how this value blends into the background so that our eye just kind of gently goes back that way instead of a sudden abrupt All right, back to the middle tone. Just lay down pieces of color. As it comes around, little passages like that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm missing your guys' uh, comments, but like I said, I will have to get them when I'm done. Okay. All right, so the top of this boat comes like this. And I'm gonna get some of the architectural ridges, like of the spines of the boat in, um, in here, just to help define some of those pieces that the light is hitting. Where are we here? That. I think that helps. And I'm gonna 
adjust a value. Sometimes you have to adjust values as you see them because they don't make sense otherwise. I look over there and the value of that boat piece is the same as the value of the shadow, but I need to adjust it to separate, to have that separation there. Okay, now I see the sand bouncing up and reflecting in the side of the boat right here. So I'm gonna, that's too bright, but I'm taking a little bit of cadmium yellow and just kind of sort of glazing it into that passage. I think of this boat as being very much like a, an object in a still life. And I'm thinking about hard edge, soft edge, the transitions where the light's hitting it. If, I find that by thinking about things like that, it takes a lot of the intimidation out of painting anything. It's just, it's no different than an apple or whatever. All right, I'm gonna clean up this shape now by painting the sand around it. And there is some bright, beautiful sun hitting the sand over here, cleaning up this edge over there and right in here. Like that. There's a dump truck uh, dumping a load of sand right here, so that's the sound you're hearing. Using the sand to help um, clean up the sand, or, excuse, I'm thinking sand, uh, to clean up the shape of the boat and the shadow under the boat. That needs to be a little bit more accurate than what I have it. It's kind of there. I'm also using my brush strokes over here to help show the form of the sand as it comes down to the boat. How are we doing on time? We're doing good. I'm just kind of taking my brush here and blending the water and the sand just a little where they connect. Like that. I don't want to blend it here though because I want the boat to be separate from the water. I'm just going to make that a little bit more separating there. I think that worked. Yeah. I think it's looking like a, an abandoned beat up boat. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Maybe I'll add some sand and stuff. I don't know. It's kind of one of those things I could definitely take back to the studio and spend a lot more time fiddling around with it. the shadow here a little more accurate. Oh, see I made too many passages with that brush stroke and I, I kind of lost the integrity of it. So I'm going to go back through and make one stroke. If you fuss with things, it, it can get looking um, flaccid and bleh. So you want to keep your brush strokes clear and crisp. Um, it'll have that what I call integrity of the brush stroke. super easy to fix that mistake. You just <laughs> go right back over the top and go one, then another if you need it. Just one. And over here, just another. Since I'm seeing a little bit of violet in that shadow, I'm going to kind of push that a little bit more because it makes it interesting. I'm not entirely a colorist like um, some impressionists are. They really push those color boundaries, which is gorgeous. Um, probably a little too literal. <laughs> But it, I like the how some people just really are so good at that. Um, so you can do that. I mean, you can push that. It looks pretty. Okay. Okay. So cleaning my brush. I'm gonna fix the shape of this shadow sand thing over here. Really blessed. So the weather is like 70. I'm I'm hot. <laughs> I'm keep my sweater off. All right. I 
Okay, what I'm not liking here compositionally is that the water here comes right in line with the boat edge. So I'm gonna bring the water down a little bit. Since it makes sense anyway, that it looks like the tide has come in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is adjust that by bringing that, remember I said I had that line of like um, brown CBD stuff that the ocean had sort of washed up? I'm gonna bring it down here like that. I think that that kind of helps give that more of that illusion of the waters down here. So then the water comes about like this. Maybe just a little bit more yellow ochre in there. Yeah, that's, that's working. Sometimes there's a wave. <laughs> and kind of suggest a wave with that um, little bit of yellow ochre. It kind of looks a little bit like that. You see that yellow ochre as it curls like that. Maybe I'll add a little bit of water. Oops. Sparkles. Just a few. Right, and then I think I'll add just a little bit of water, sparkly things, and the bottom of the boat to suggest water. I don't know if that actually looks like water in the boat, but um, anyway, I hope that this has been fun and interesting, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful and blessed Easter and um, whatever you celebrate. Thank you so much for joining me, and thank you so much for your prayers and support. You guys are awesome. You mean the world to me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.